Firing in three, two, one. There's a long-standing tradition on YouTube to make celebration videos when you hit a major milestone. And while every creator does them differently, The Odd Ones Out has always celebrated his by covering cakes in obscene amounts of sprinkles. And as one of my favorite creators, I think it'd be cool to combine his concept with a classic maker project, DIY rocket motors that are powered by sugar. I'm a little worried about getting this out while it's still relevant, since my videos normally take at least a month to make, but I'm not reinventing the wheel here. It's a project that already exists, and sprinkles are basically sugar already, so I'm sure I can get this done pretty quick. That's what I said five months ago. I started this project naively optimistic. I want to see if maybe it's pretty easy to just mash this or grind it and get it to a pretty small consistency, but I quickly learned that this was going to be harder than I thought. That reaction is really, really slow. That's slower than I expected, even. I mean, the mix was pretty terrible, but clearly Jimmy's won't cut it, but I was undeterred. There are other kinds of sprinkles. Surely one of them has to work. And I was right. While technically the sanding sugar appeared to work the best, I don't really think of those as sprinkles, so the obvious choice was the close runner up. Der Rudiger fruit flavored sprinkles. Der Rudiger? Der Ruitger. Der Ruitger. Sorry, Dutch people. The early success gave me confidence this would work, so I put out a call for my subscribers to build and send in rockets while I got to work counting and weighing 100 sprinkles. And after a little simple math, I found that getting 500,000 meant buying around 30 boxes of fancy Dutch sprinkles, plus 30 pounds of potassium nitrate as an oxidizer for the fuel. I know what that sounds like, and I'm definitely on a list. With a promising starting mix, it was time to make a motor. The original recipe calls for PVC pipes as motor casings, but since I decided on C-sized motors, PVC pipe wouldn't work. So instead, I printed the casings myself using a simple 3D model made by the WISE task force. And after grinding, mixing, tamping, and drilling, my first test motor was ready for the test oh. bench. Wow, that worked perfectly. Time to try it for real. Three, two, one. Huh. Okay, well, that one looked weird anyway. Maybe the fuel was bad? Everything looks fine, which just kind of makes this even more strange. Maybe it was whole size. Right, so this is a 964th bit. We're gonna try that. Three, two, one. All right. Rocket attempt two, wider bore hole. Three, two, one. And nothing. Yeah, still no clue what's happening. There's obviously something funny going on here, so I tried to reason through it. Model rocket motors work because pressure from burning fuel shoots out a small hole which acts as a nozzle in the bottom of the rocket. And this rapid release of pressure pushes the rocket upward. Using one is super simple. You take a motor, insert an igniter, and then plug it with one of these so the igniter doesn't fall out. But with my rockets, it looked like what was happening was that the rocket itself wasn't burning fast enough to get it going, since in the few cases where it left the pad, it seemed more like pressure was first building up behind the plug and then popping like a cork from a bottle of champagne. Without that plug, the motors weren't burning fast enough to put out the amount of pressure needed to launch the rocket, and that kind of makes sense, because it turns out sugar is a really horrible fuel to start with. The fact sugar motors even exist is more so just because it's readily available. But at this point, I'm in too deep to quit, so how can I fix it? Two ideas. Option A, drill a deeper hole, causing more of the fuel to ignite all at once, meaning more pressure will be trying to escape. Persistence two, new motor firing in three, two, one. Well, that was new. Wasn't exactly what I was hoping for. Option B, try using a more unstable oxidizer for a more efficient and faster burn. Two, one. Uh. <laughs> Oops, holy crap. Neither one of these was a runaway success, and while the second one technically exploded, it was more energetic. So I decided to try both again to see if some high-speed shots could help me diagnose the problem. Well, that was depressing and sad. I feel like now the hole's too wide. Potassium chlorate in three, two, one. Holy crap. That was actually great until it exploded. I don't know why it exploded. <laughs> why did I sign up for this? One way or another, I needed a cool sprinkle-fueled celebration, and to get there, clearly I was gonna need some professional help. So after hitting up a couple friends, I was finally introduced to Todd. Todd's what you call an expert, like launches massive rockets and leads the Ohio State rocketry team type expert. Holy crap, that was awesome. <laughs> So if we were gonna work together, I wanted to add to the celebration in the best way Todd knew how, by putting a box full of sprinkles in a giant rocket and blasting them into the atmosphere. We're gonna start with one. 
I'm gonna claim full responsibility for this rocket. Totally made this thing. <laughs> oh, I employed the same technique the other day and thought I was doing something jank, but this is uh, apparently for fully official technique. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, buddy. Four. All right. After the launch, Todd and I reviewed the high-speed clips of my rockets. It turns out swapping the oxidizer was actually on the right track. I was just missing the secret ingredient. Red iron oxide. Red iron oxide isn't strictly necessary, but in the right quantity, it serves to stabilize the mixture, and my motors clearly needed all the stabilizing they could get. So with a new test mixture, I prepared a fresh motor and headed out to test it. Well, ah, 5% red iron oxide. Three, two, one. Wait, yo, yo, it didn't explode. Let's go. <laughs> Holy crap, we got a rocket to like go off and just, it just didn't explode. That's such a win. Woo. Ow. Still hot. Finally, I'd found a working mixture, but I still needed to perfect it. So I ran a bunch of additional tests, changing fuel mix, nozzle size, and bore depth. Sorry. Until I finally settled on the perfect mixture for our launch. And while 500,000 sprinkles made way more fuel than we needed to power these rockets, I had a plan for that in mind. We have all of the rockets set up. Literally all of the cameras are running as we speak. And I also just want to thank all of the subscribers. I seriously appreciate you all. And I also want to say thank you to all of my patrons who've supported me. This video has no sponsor as a gift to you, so if you can, please consider supporting the Patreon. Thank you so much to the Wise Task Force for their help on this project. If you want to get directly involved with my videos, you can apply to join below. It's not just engineers. If you're a fan of this channel and you have any special skills, location access, or resources you're willing to share, send in an application. And last but not least, if you want to hang with me and the rest of our community, the Wise Guys Discord will always be free to join. It's incredibly important to me that this community is never pay to play, but I want you to get involved in a way that's meaningful to you. You. So be part of this however you can and join in our celebration as we smash every future milestone. So just seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much. And without further ado, let's launch some rockets. Launching in three, two, one. I am so nervous. Please, nobody notice the massive cloud. All that in one piece. Shout out to patrons Adam and Maddox, you absolute mad lads. Check out Jack's channel for helping me in the last few months, and I will see you next time. <laughs> that is the stupidest and most awesome thing I think I've ever done.